It's your girl Stacey Cake, your host for What's Hot, and today I'm here with John Davis. So who is John Davis? Uh, uh, John Davis is just probably a person. It's a good guy. I just want everybody to think like I'm a good guy. Just like down to earth, funny, uh, know everybody. It's an athlete, student athlete first. Um, just somebody that everybody knows is just a funny guy. Just a little kid that's always going to have fun, be around family and friends. So you're on the Towson's basketball team. Yeah. You're a forward, and you've been in the spotlight a lot lately because of an event that happened recently in your life. Yeah. So can you kind of describe that day, like how that day went? Oh uh, man, it was just like a like a dramatic turn of events. Like uh, we was in Philly for like a basketball game at Drexel. Good time. Uh, my last time playing in Philly, so like a lot of friends and family came out to see me. Afterwards, we got something to eat and we just hanging out a little bit. You know what I mean? And like it was just like, boom, like wrong place, wrong time, and it just, it just happened. So it was just like, like the day was just so good, and then it's like, dang, like you know what I mean? Right. So, so were you like at home? Oh uh, yeah, I was at home. I was around like in my neighborhood. You know, just hanging out a lot of people around me, you know what I mean? Because a lot of people just happy to see that I was home. So a lot of people just, you know I mean, just happy to support me. Went to the game. I had a good game. We won. So, you know, the spirits was high. You know, everybody was just hanging out, probably ready to go out after that. So we were just all hanging out. Like, it was like a drastic, like, yeah, shift in, like, the day. Like, night and day. It was like night and day. So, yeah, just dramatic, like a real dramatic turn. But. So what was running through your mind, like, when it happened? Oh man, uh, when it first happened, I didn't even know to be honest. I just thought like I might have just like got like a graze, like a minor, like cause it wasn't bleeding that much, it wasn't doing too much. But uh, the first thing that probably came to my mind was probably my son. Mm -hmm. Just not a lot of people asking about basketball, but I was like, nah, like just my son. You know what I mean? Once I felt that I was obviously still alive, I was just so thankful. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. that I'll be able to see him again. And just that was probably the most. Thing that came to my mind, the definitely the number one thing that came to my mind. So, how do you think it impacted your your son, number one, and also like your mom, your family? Like, I mean, <laughs> luckily my son only took months, so he, you know, he don't know what's going on. But uh, so I don't think it impacted him as much. I still made it to his dedication the next the next uh, morning in church. But you know, my family and my friends like it kind of took a toll on him. You know what I mean? Uh, just my mom watching me like. You know, she was around me the whole time. Just her seeing me, I could tell. Just her seeing me, like, in the hospital, you know what I mean? And just her just saying, like, damn, like, we was just at your back. Like, we just had the game. And it's just like, man, mm -hmm. you're here. Like, you know what I mean? And my mom kind of know, like, I'm a good kid. I don't really get into, you know I mean, the streets or whatever. So it was just like a like a sad case. Like, you know what I mean? Like, why? But at the end of the day, everything happens for a reason. So it was your friend you were with? And uh, he was 16? Oh, uh, yeah, he was 16 years old. But it was, it was a bunch of us. But the only one that, uh, that happened to get, shot, to get hit was me, the basketball player, and the youngest person that was out there, which was a 16 year old, my friend. So it was just crazy. So you kind of mentioned earlier, do you think it was wrong time, wrong place, or do you feel like it was more like an um, intention behind it? Uh, I definitely think it was uh, wrong time, wrong place. Like I said, everybody knows me, everybody knows what I do. But um, like I said, I'm not into really the streets at all. So. So I think mm -hmm. they just seemed like a crowd. They definitely couldn't see, me. like the way it happened, like they definitely couldn't see me, like, you know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. So it was definitely the wrong place, wrong time, but it was it's an eye opener. Mm -hmm. you know I mean? Definitely a big eye opener for me. So who told your mom? Was she like there? <laughs> nah, um, you know, I was with my brother, my youngest brother, or my only brother. And um, like I said, I was in my neighborhood, so my house not too far. Mm -hmm. So when it happened, like, I kind of ran to my house, and my mom was upstairs, so she heard the. Oh, so you still you were able to? Oh yeah, I didn't like I said I, when I first happened, I didn't know. I thought it was just like like I got grazed or something. I thought I'd be fine. Like it was just nothing. So you know, of course, I went home, just in the house playing around, jumping, like doing different things. I ran home, so I thought I was, definitely thought I was good. And once like we got adrenaline. in the house, yeah, my adrenaline. Me and my brother were just talking. So you know, of course, my mom heard. She came downstairs. Have you been home since the incident? Uh, actually, I have not. Uh, after I went to the hospital, that was my last time being home. Are you like afraid to go home? Uh, no, nah, like not at all. I mean, my city like violence is like every day. Just 
it just never happened to happen to me. Mm. I mean, I, I know what it is. You know what I mean? I know how it is. So definitely, I love my home, love my city. So I'll be back soon. But um, my coaches kind of got they wanted me back on campus. Mm -hmm. You know, be back to like a safe environment. Back on campus, get me back to class uh, and start my uh, physical therapy, which I started already. So. They wanted me back here, and I, that's, 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 that was one of the first things I wanted to do. I wanted to first see my son, the second I wanted to get back and see my teammates. You know what I mean? Like they're a big part of my family as well, so I couldn't wait to get back and see them. And I knew we had big games coming up, so that was that was a big thing. I was. So you received like you received a lot of support from students and especially your teammates. Yeah. I've seen T-shirts, yeah. the JD number ten, yeah. and um, even like. Students with signs in the audience. So how does that make you feel? Oh uh, man, it, make, it just shows support. I mean, feel like I'm loved. Like a lot of people, you know, what I mean, like me and just know who I am. You know what I mean? So just people that you might not even think is watching, but they know who you are. So just the support was just crazy. Even though I was in the hospital before surgery, after surgery, I had like at least 400 text messages. Like just people just texting and you know, all social media was blowing up. I was like kind of all around the nation. Like everybody knew what was going. So like even people out of the country is hitting me up, like people that's overseas. So just the love was just like I think that's that's really what got me through. You know what I mean? That's really what kept my kept me sane. You know what I mean? Knowing that I was gonna get back, be able to get back, and I think that that really would, would push me. Was it an overwhelming thing, or was it more like like you said, did it like push you, or was it more like I just I need to like take a step back because it's too much attention? Or uh, the whole situation it wasn't. It wasn't overwhelming. Like uh, I believe in God, you know what I mean. I don't think He's gonna give you too much that you you can't handle. So at the end of the day, I never asked Him why. You know what I mean. I know everything happens for a reason. So I was just kind of just like I don't want to say going for the ride, but I was just like I'm here now. You know what I mean. Nothing I can do about it, and I just gotta push to to get better, to get back to where I was, and even and even better. So. That was just my whole mindset from the start when I heard I had to get surgery, you know what I mean? So that was just the, my whole path from there. And like I said, like the support that I had around me from family, friends, my teammates, just you know, you'll be surprised, like random people just hit me up, like they heard, you know what I mean? You know, they watched me play, like just that support, that's what that's what really got like got me pushing, you know what I mean? Got me pushing, so. And how has it impacted your future with basketball, or has it impacted your future with basketball? Uh, one of the blessed, uh, things I'm blessed, so blessed about that, I'll definitely be able to play basketball again. Mm -hmm. uh, come back stronger than before. Uh, it's just a couple months away from me being back on the floor and doing what I do. So that's one thing that I'm definitely blessed about. Then uh, bullet didn't touch anything major. You know, they were able to go in and get out, take it out, and fast, uh, fast surgery. So I'll definitely be able to play again in the future. And so you graduate in May. And this is, I'm sure, like a crucial event in your yeah. senior year, like yeah. something you'll never forget. Yeah. So how would, what would you say the biggest lesson you've learned from this? Oh man, the biggest lesson is just, you can never be, you can never be too careful. If that makes sense at all. Just especially when you, knowing like where you at, your surroundings. You know what I mean? Just making sure everybody that you with is on the same. The same path you want. Know I mean, so like, like I told you before in a previous interview, like I'm not just living for me no more. I got a son, so it's just like all my, all my like, uh, what do I want to say, all my decisions. I have to like, like have a counteract. Think about it. You know what I mean? Even like just as, as I thought something as innocent as just standing outside my neighborhood, I, I got to double take now. You know, I got to just, I can never be too sure. So that's just one thing that I took away from that. Just always. Being cautious, you know what I mean, about where you at, what you're doing. I mean, my, back in my mind, like I got a son, so I gotta like, gotta move different. <laughs> that makes uh, sense. Yeah. So, is it one thing you would like to leave the audience with? Like, can you name a song that like motivates you or like gets you through the day after this event, or maybe even before, that like helps uh, keep you positive? Because you, you're you're taking it very well. Like you seem yeah. very like positive and yeah. like not like. Angry? No, I'm not angry at all. No, not angry at all. But uh, one song, oh man, I listen to a lot of music. But probably something from me. I don't know what song, like, that's my favorite artist, but just from him. I would say Meek Mill, just like, overall, I don't have like one song I listen to like all his music. Just 
um, as a whole, just because he like, kind of like from the same area. You know what I mean? Like the stuff he talk about, I know about. Like you know what I mean? Some people from like, some like a priest from Berlin, he might like the song, but like they don't actually know like exactly what he's talking about. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like I, I like I know exactly like, what he's talking about. Yeah. Right, right. So it's just like. Just hearing somebody like that that made it, you know what I mean, coming from the same area, the same trouble, the same problem, you know what I mean, it's just, that's just like the biggest motivation. All right, well, thank you so much. Yeah, you had it right here, it was hot.